Hey guys, we're going to talk about stem and leaf plots and histograms. Yes, that is not a medical procedure. It is a data collection tool. So stick with me. Lesson 85. Black math. Give me some math and I'll give you some flack. Black math. All right, lesson 85. Here we go. So we're going to talk about stem and leaf plots first. So let's say we've got a list of 30 test scores. These are gonna appear right up here, wait for it. There they are, looking good, 30 test scores. So you could put them all in order and do all that and you can figure out your statistics like mean, median, range, and mode, but it might be easier since there's so many scores to do what's called a stem and leaf plot, okay? So stem in this case would just be your tens value of each number and your leaf is your ones value. So let's just write these numbers with a stem and leaf plot. Here's my stem and here's my leaf, okay? So and all my values range from like 50 something to 90 something. So my stem, my tens values are five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And my leaf values are gonna be all the 50s, all the numbers in the 60s, all the numbers in the 70s, but just the one value, okay? Now, it seems weird right now, but it'll make sense in a second. Okay, so I'm gonna go through my numbers. I'll start with 92, so I'm just gonna put a two there. The next number is 75, so I'm gonna put a five right there. The next number is 69, so I'm gonna put a nine right there. The next number is 56, so I'm gonna put a six right there. The next number is 88, so I'm gonna put an eight right there. Okay, and then after 88 comes 62. So there's already a nine there, so I'm gonna just put a comma and put 62. Okay, then 75. And then I'll just do these real quick. All right, so that's my stem and leaf plot. Okay, now the better thing to do right now is to just rewrite this. I know you just got done writing all these. Good job. We're just gonna write them in order now. So five goes six and eight, that was already in order. Six goes two, five, nine. Seven goes zero, four, four, five, five. And then eight goes zero, one, one, two, three, five, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine. See ya. And then nine goes to zero. One, two, four, five, five, six, six. Okay, so just like when we organized data before, the best thing to do first is always put them in order. So we just put these in numerical order. So we can find the range pretty easily by just looking at our largest number, which is 96, and our smallest number, which is 56. So our range is 40. We can see our mode a little easier because all the numbers that repeat are right next to each other. So a number that repeats is, let's see, 74 and 75 repeat twice. Let's see, 81 repeats twice, 87 repeats twice, 88 repeats twice, um, 95 and 96. So see how it's easy to see the, the modes as well. So you've got multiple modes, you've got 74, 75, 81, 87, 88, 95, and 96. Okay, and now that you know that there's 30 scores, we can just figure out what's in between. So 30 is an even number, so that means you're gonna have two numbers in the middle. So you can still do your cross out thing where you start at the, be start at the beginning and the end and just start crossing them out until they meet each other. Or you could just count since you know there's 30 scores, go to 15, go to 16, and figure out what number's halfway between the 15th and 16th number. In this case, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it looks like this is our median, where our median's gonna be. So our median is gonna be halfway between 83 and 85, or the average of 83 and 85, which is 84. So our median 
equals 84. Okay, and then mean wise, the way we remember mean is it's the meanest thing I could ask you to do. Add up all these 30 numbers and divide by 30. Okay, so you can do that if you want. I think it's in the book, 81.47-ish. All right, so let's try another example. I'm gonna have you guys do this and we'll come back and see how you do. This is officially example one or 85.1. Um, let's see, we've got Mark got some uh, got some golf clubs and he went to a driving range and, and hit these balls here. I'll just put these numbers right up here. I want you to create a stem and leaf plot and keep in mind, these are three digit numbers. So your stem is gonna be the first two digits of the number. So your leaf is your ones value. So your stem is gonna be like 14. It's gonna, because the lowest number is gonna be 140 something. So your first stem is gonna be 14, okay? So try this, try to create a stem and leaf plot. And then I want you to tell me which two digit stem the most balls were hit, okay? So which tens group did most of the balls land? So press pause and try it. All right, so let's create a stem and leaf plot here. So here's our stems. And on this side is our leaves, leafs, leaves. I think you, you still use the same plural of leaf in this. Okay, so our first stem is 14 and then we have 15. So 140 something, 150 something, 160 something, 170 something and 180 something. So here's our leaves after you put them in order. If you haven't put them in order yet, press pause again and put them in order. All right, so which tens group did most of the balls land? It looks like in the 170s. So if that's how you answered it, good job, you're right. Okay, in the next example, it just, it already gives you the stem and leaf plot. So here's the stem and leaf plot. And then you're asked to find the range, median, mode, and mean. Okay, so here we go, we got 840, and then it doesn't give it, they don't put them in order. So you'd have to do that. It'll make it a little easier. In the 850s, you got four, two, three, three. 860s, you got 862, three, seven, five, and two. In the 870s, you get six, six, three, Three. So let's find the range. Well, let's see if we can do this without putting them in order. So really for the range, you just need the biggest number and you just need the smallest number. So the biggest number is 80, 876. You see how I got that? So the biggest number in this little row here is six. And then you need the smallest number. So your smallest number, just look for the smallest digit in this row. So it looks like six. So this is 876 minus 846. So you subtract that and you get 30. So the range is 30. All right, next, median. So how many numbers you got? You got four, four, five, and four. What is that, 17 numbers, okay. So it looks like the you've, it's an odd number of numbers. So that means you do have a middle number. It's the ninth number, okay. So let's see which row we have to put in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight goes there. So let's put these guys in order. So this is gonna be two, two, three, five, and seven. So now the ninth number is gonna be this two here. So what's our median? Our median is 862. Boom. Okay, now mode. Well. Again, it's a lot easier to see see the mode if it's in order, but let's see. It looks like there's a couple eights there. So 848 is a, is a candidate for a, a mode. It looks like there's a couple threes there, so 853 is a candidate. It looks like there's a couple twos there, so 862. So we've got multiple modes again because we have multiple numbers appearing twice. If we just had one that appeared three times, then we could ignore all those other numbers and just go with the one that appeared three times, but you don't. So here are your modes. 848, 853, 862, 873, and 876. So those are your modes. All right, then the last one is the meanest thing I could ask you 
I want you to find the mean. Okay, well, mean is just add them all up and divide by 17. Okay, so go ahead and do it. What'd you get? What'd you get? You can just use your calculator. What are you doing? Just use a calculator. It's okay. All right, so all the numbers add up to this big boy here, 14,620. We're gonna divide by 17. The final answer of 860. Whenever you find the mean of something, just see if it kind of happens, if it lands somewhere in between all the numbers, okay? And it does, 860 is somewhere between 846 and 876, okay? So it makes sense to me. Good, good. All right, now we're gonna talk about histograms. And again, it's not a medical procedure. It is an actual mathematical tool to collect data and to display data and to graph data. And it's just a nice visual representation of mathematical data. Those are big words. So a histogram is kind of like a stem and leaf plot that got pushed over and is now laying face up. So here's my, here's my, Here's my stem, here's my leaves. So I just went like this. Okay, except it's backwards. So I went like this. Whoa, boom, ow, that hurt. That's gonna leave a mark. This is what a histogram looks like. Instead of a stem and leaf on the top, you're just gonna have a little bar on the bottom. And here's where you put your stems. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay? So these are your stems, and then here are your leaves. So you got six and eight. Whew, that was a tall thing, tall column, tall building, tall histo, whatever. So now see how all these layers kind of kind of line up a little bit. That's important to do, even if your eight, eight column goes way high. Because now you can see, without a doubt, where most of the numbers are collecting. So we've got like 56, 58, 69, 62, 65, 75, 75, 74, 70, 74. Okay, so most of your numbers are hanging out in the 80s. This is the same example we used previously in this chapter for a stem and leaf plot. So you can see how the stem and leaf just kind of went like that. So now if I push over this thing, then it looks like a stem and leaf plot. Okay, so it's the same thing. It's just a different way to look at it. So you can see that kind of looks like a bar graph. So you could even write it like a bar graph. So in the 50s, it goes up to two. In the 60s, it goes up to three. In the 70s, it goes up to five. In the 80s, it goes up farther. In the 90s, it goes up to eight, okay? So you can represent this as a bar graph. And when you write it out like this, it's called frequency distribution. So the graph shows that there were two scores in the 50s, three scores in the 60s, five scores in the 70s, 12 scores in the 80s, and eight scores in the 90s. So with these graphs, um, if you're just looking for frequency distribution, like how many numbers end up in the 80s and 90s like that, then you don't really need to put them in order if you're just looking for the frequency distribution. Okay, so we're just gonna do example three and this is gonna look a little different. It might be a little easier for you. Here's what example three says. Okay, so we have 40 cars that passed a checkpoint, okay? And they were clocked at going at a certain miles per hour. Let's say that every car was going at least 25 miles per hour, okay? So there's a certain number of cars that were going in between 25 and 30 miles per hour, a certain number of cars that were going in between 30 and 35, 35 and 40, 40 and 45, 45 and 50, and then 50 and 55. So this histogram is gonna show us how fast these cars were going. So in between 25 and 30, there were four cars, okay? In between 30 and 35, there were 10 cars. We're gonna go up to 10. In between 35 and 40, there were 11 cars. In between 40 and 45, there were eight cars. In between 45 and 50, there were six cars. And in between 50 and 55, there was just one car. So one center going way too fast. So how many cars had a speed greater than or equal to 25, but less than 30? 
So it looks like four, four cars, all right? Number B, number B. What was the mode interval, okay? The mode interval, now this is where we talk about the frequency distribution. Where did most of the speeds occur? Well, it looks like in between 35 and 40. This is a kind of a new term. It's not the mode, it's the mode interval. So what interval happens the most is this guy right here. So mode interval. So these are all intervals, but this is the one that happens most often. Remember, that's a little shortcut for mode. So most often is in between 35 and 40. Next question, question C. So what percent of the cars drove at, a, at speeds less than 40 miles per hour? Well, to calculate percent, you can calculate the decimal. So this much out of this much. So less than 40, let's see if this is four, this is four, that's 10, that's 11. Okay. So that means that was 25 are less than 40 miles per hour, okay? Out of the total, well, that's 25 out of 40. Well, let's do that math. That equals 0.625. So what percent is that? Move the decimal over two places, 62.5%. So that's it. That's stem and leaf plots and histograms. How do you feel? Me too, not that different. That's okay. All right, we'll see you next time for lesson 86. Black man, give me some math and I'll give you some flack. Black